recording. All right. Let me get this thing set up here so it's a little bit more squared up on my... What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Creatures of Habit podcast. Now, uh, there are very few people that I could honestly say have scared the shit out of me in the last 10 or 15 years. Uh, but the guy that I've got on the podcast today, uh, I went through an experience with him being an instructor, me being a student. Um, he really did some incredible he offered me just an absolutely incredible layer of, of, of productivity and optimism in my life. Um, and, I, and I'll share exactly when that happened. Um, I don't even know if I've shared that with Steve yet, but I want to introduce Steve Eckert. Um, he's a personal discipline development and accountability coach. Uh, he is also a United States Marine. He is the co-founder of The Project, uh, as well as the Squire program. The project is what I, I went through uh, under, under Steve. Um, he's the founder of Operate to Dominate Peak Performance Coaching. The guy is one of the most incredible fathers I've ever experienced and husbands. Um, and, and honestly, a, a dude that, that I believe I will be friendly with for the rest of my life um, in this brotherhood that I've uh, been, been introduced to through the Modern Day Nights Project. So Steve, welcome to the show, man. Hell yeah, excited to be on here. I'll give you five bucks later for saying all that good shit about me because I don't know where you came up with that stuff, but good stuff. And I'm curious to hear what the point that you're talking about is during during your experience. I'm looking forward to hearing that. Yeah, so I'll, I'll kick it off with that. You know, I think uh, when I when I came into the project, there were so many reasons why I wanted to do it. Um, but one of the one of the main reasons I think why you know I wanted to do it was that, that I've always struggled with authority. I've always struggled with authority, uh, and that's probably stems back to you know, my childhood, but authority was something that I really wanted to overcome. And I knew that I was going to get my ass kicked out there um, by men of authority. And, and that was something that I was looking forward to um, really, really owning up to. Uh, but there was a, there was a moment um, probably it was towards the end. It was like 50 or 60 hours in um, and we were pretty depleted. We were in, in a vulnerable state and you got right up into my face, like within centimeters of my face and you said you fucking think they give a fuck about how many restaurants you have you think they give a fuck what you have in the fucking bank wake the fuck up man wake the fuck up they don't give a fuck about that they want you and i was like i mean i get chills now you gave me fucking chills you gave me fucking chills telling me what your experience that's fucking awesome dude you 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 know like I, I literally have chills right now thinking about that experience, that, that moment in that time, because, you know, like we started with fucking 25 guys, four guys bailed out, uh, you know, within 24 hours of showing up. And then we lost over 50% of the, of the, of the, of the, of the guys within the first like 30 hours of the thing. And so it was really fucking hard. It was really fucking hard. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done. One of the most gratifying things I've ever done. Um, but I, I, you know, we all, I think all of the dudes that went there walked in with this, like, I want to be more present. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better business person. Um, but, but ultimately what you said to me wasn't to make me a better father, husband, business per person. It was, it was really, it gave me the fucking gift of, of, of saying they want you, you need to be fucking better. You personally, as a human being need to be fucking better because they want you. They don't want what you do. They don't want what you've done. They don't fucking want your business. They want you. And I was like, and that's what I took from that. And so, I, you know, I, I came back and I, and, and I made all sorts of commitments that I've stuck to, which has been incredible. But anyway, dude, it was just uh, that that was a pivotal moment in my life, honestly. So yeah, thank you. For awesome that. to hear. Good stuff. Um, so, dude, just just give us a give us a, a bio on you. I'd love to hear it from you and uh, and how you got to where you are today. Basically, just from New York, originally moved to California just three years ago. Actually, I moved to California right before the first class of the project because I wanted to just be here and close here just to the project. We didn't know what it was going to turn into. 
I just wanted to, I know I wanted to be here. I wanted to be close to it. It was a, it was a fucking weird thing. Literally sold my house in New York without anywhere to live in California. We jumped in our Ford 150 F-150 pickup truck and just drove across the country without a place to stay in California just to make sure I got here before the first class of the project. And that's a true fucking story. And we didn't find a place to stay until we got all the way to Utah. And the agent finally found us a place that, that for what we, the type of place we were looking for. So I was willing to live in a hotel for the first two or three months if I had to, just to make sure I was in California for the project. And that all stemmed from really just growing up as, as without a, a positive male role model, without having any circle of friends or having no friends and just being a loner and a fucking ghost and realizing the potential what the project had, that it, it was something really for men who maybe didn't have positive male, male role models or didn't have that circle of like-minded, high-performing people that think on a different freak level like themselves and didn't even know how to operate as adults because of usually the stupid shit that we hold on to from when we were kids. We're grown fucking men and we really, 99.9% of men run around like little fucking boys because you're still hanging on to that shit that happened. So knowing the growth that I had and knowing the potential what the project could do for other men, I just had to be in the vicinity. I had to live here. I just had to live next to where we're going to do it. It's a fucking weird thing. And, and that's really what, what happened is I wanted to live in that role model mindset, be the complete opposite of the male the negative male role model that I saw, I, I wanted to dedicate my life to being the complete fucking opposite of everything that I saw my father doing. Everything that my father, the way I, he treated me and the, the way that my life was, going to dedicate my entire life to be the exact opposite. And now I have an 11 year old son and an eight year old daughter. And that's literally the goal every fucking day in life. It makes life easy when that's the goal. It makes it fucking simple. Um, you know, if you could describe, obviously you do a lot of things and you've built lots of businesses. Uh, I didn't go through even half of, of your bio uh, because it was just fucking too long. Um, but, you know, you've built a bunch of businesses uh, in the fitness space, in the coaching space before you, you stepped into the project. It sounds like the project um, has become really sort of the most gratifying piece of, of your business life, um, if, not the, if not the most. Um, so, I mean, if you had to describe it for, for, for the audience, like what, what is the project? Well, yeah, for, well, first thing you just said about the most gratifying and so I'm 40, uh, 44 years old right now. And I never got a tattoo until I was 41. It was actually after that first class of the project. And it's the logo of the project right on top of my hand. The first fucking tattoo I got with blood dripping off of it because that's the impact after just one class that it had on just me and myself as a fucking man, as a husband, as a father, and saw the potential and how it helped other men. So gratifying 100%. Even that first class of the project, us five instructors that were just talking about it, throwing ideas around, talking about the crazy for it. And when the idea first came up, I said, I'm fucking in. I'm in for free if I have to be, I'm fucking in. And I would do it for free to this day if I, if I could. And, and it's just the... Uh, that's why it's called the project. It was literally just a side project because it was a passion project. And that's where the name, the project came about. So totally uh, 100% that that's kind of wh where it started from. And it is a, the most gratifying and fulfilling. To explain it, what it, it actually is, I'd say the project is this magic portal for men. It's a magical portal. Now, some men are gonna go through that magic portal in that portal is gonna be a lot of fucking violence and fear and chaos and everything simulating life that life is gonna throw you. The universe is gonna bitch slap you, gonna kick you in the fucking nuts. That's what this magical portal is at, at some point of the project and the project as a whole. It's really just a metaphor for life. And some men are gonna with made and want to with, you know, with, deal with that storm and make it through that magical portal and become this whole different level of themselves that they never even knew existed. Something that you, you just can't do on your own. It can only be done in some severe suffering and hardship and chaos. And certain, only a select few, like one, someone like yourself, who actually makes it through that portal. So it's really a line in the sand. Either you have what it takes, you really want to stop living a life of mediocrity and fucking half-assing everything in your life, and you want to stop being the cycle, stop letting the cycle continue of shitty males in your fucking family tree and you're deciding to fight and battle and willing to fucking bleed and puke and shit and die to get through that magical portal to get to that 
different. It's not even a new, it's not even a higher level of yourself. It's not even a better version of yourself. It's a complete different fucking animal that that portal is turning you into that savage servant, like you say, that beast. And the ones that don't make it through, unfortunately, are going to continue just dragging ass and half-assing through life in, 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 that, in that bitch mode that they're stuck in. So it really is just a magical portal. It's an ultimate test. It's violent, men, physical, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual therapy when it comes down to it. I think that was a great description. Um, again, like, you know, it was, it was uh, one of the one of the most challenging things I've ever done, if not the most challenging thing I've ever done. You know, done. we go poker face though, because I remember I would talk to you on the side here and there and I'm looking like, are we even fucking getting through this guy? Because you had a good poker face, like almost made it seem, not that it was easy, but like, all right, I got this. You were just cr not cruising through, but you had a good poker face. Because, Well, I will tell you this, you know, there was, there was a, a, a moment, um, there was so many different elements of it uh, that were, that, that like, I'll never forget. Early on, probably in the first uh, 24 to 30 hours or something like that, um, we were at the, we we had all we were already all. I mean, when I'm saying bloody for the people that are listening, I'm 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 not joking. We were we were all bloody. Um, all of us had been you know had ripped the fucking skin off of our knees and our arms and our elbows and our stomachs and our backs, and um, and uh, one of the instructors, Matt, walked up to me. And uh, he got close to my, my ear as we were, as I was, you know, crawling through the pit. And he said, um, look, dude, we all know that you're a fucking specimen, but that doesn't mean shit. I'm here to tell you that you haven't looked back once at your fucking team. You haven't looked back one time. You are in the front. We all know you're in the fucking front. You don't get trophies here. You haven't looked back one fucking time. Think about that. Mm -hmm how are you walking through your life? Right. Are you doing the same fucking thing? Is it all you? And I was like, fuck, you know, and that's when, that's when one of the flips, one of the switch flipped for me, uh, out, out there. Um, and, and, you know, like, look, dude, like I put myself through hell as, as you guys, I, I mean, similar to you, right? Like I watch what you do on a fucking Saturday with your family, you know, I, I mean, you got, you, you, there's, there's certain people that I think, really, really do run towards the fire, run towards it. Don't even like, like fear. It's, it's not even like fear is, is uh, fear is absolute motivation. Uh, and, and I'm one of those people where like, I see the fire and I run it, I run full speed. At, I run full speed to it because I know, and, and, and the, the project was like the prime example of this. I know that on the other side of that fire is fucking freedom. I know that. Okay. I know that I am going to have to walk through pain if I want to grow and succeed. And so I think like the, you know, the project really, really did uh, illuminate that for me in so many different ways. Um, look, you know, you're, you're obviously an incredibly structured um, individual. I know that from just being out there now following you on social, reading the stuff, the, 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 the content that you put out very regularly on a system. Um, I would imagine you have a pretty, rigid structured morning routine can you walk us through what your morning routine looks like yeah sure a lot, a lot of it's going to be probably similar to things you've heard but i'll add in some stuff that's that's maybe not and so the morning routine i call it the m9s and it's the first rule is and this is before it even gets to the the nine m's is the feet hit the ground before anything else i don't turn turn the alarm off and then get up like lay down and turn off the alarm or sit up and, it's like Feet hit ground, turn alarm off, and boom, it's fucking bring, time to bring the fire. And it starts right off the bat with mantras. And it's stuff that people talk about. A lot of stuff, all right, a lot of stuff in morning routines is things that people talk about, but people just don't fucking do it consistently. I know they don't because they people talk, they'll post about it. It sounds cool. They'll, they'll share something on Instagram. But they don't fucking do it. But do you have the, actually have a mantra that you say out loud? in your head and write it down several times a day and actually vocalize it and think it in your head that gets you through shit. It helps you change your state. That's what a fucking mantra is. It's a deeper level than just saying fucking just do it or some lame shit like that. Like something that's meaningful to you and something that means something. So the first thing is a mantra. Like literally I, I hop up fucking, I get up like it's like the house is on fire. Like it's a fucking alarm and air raid siren coming in. It's time to go to war and it is. It's time to go to war with the day fucking enemy is out there. The universe is out there to, to throw all kinds of shit your way. So 
It's feet hit the floor, alarm goes off, monster in the head. I'm telling myself things like, today's going to be fucking awesome. Life is fucking awesome. I am fucking awesome. No excuses. Never make any, never accept any. I'm going to kill. I'm going to kill the day. I'm going to kill the fear, kill the doubt, kill the procrastination that's in my head. Kill the little inner demons and inner bitch. The kids kill the little boy from the past. This is the stuff I'm telling myself the second I wake up. So it's like off to the fucking races. It's time to go to battle. So Do you have, can I, I just, cause I, I, I want to just unpack that for a second. So you get up, you throw your feet, you immediately feet down, you stand up. And, and is there like something that, is there a place that you're going to have these, to say these mantras? Or is it just like, as you're walking through your morning shit, you're saying this shit in your head. It's like literally right there as I'm going to go, go take care of shit. It's going through my head. But then once I get to the part later on, on, on the actual writing, it will be actually written down. I'll be writing it down in the, in the journal part also, but it's literally just right in the head, just to start getting into that mind space right off the bat to change the state. But then I am actually writing this stuff down every day. Like if you look at every page and I have stacks of old journals here, like hundreds of them, every single page will say, and I'll say the longer version of them in my head, but every page will say, I am fucking awesome. Every page will say no excuses. Every page will say attack. Every page will say kill. Every single morning and every single night, you'll see those things written. And then each one of them goes off into my head of a little longer of it, but those are like the triggers to change my state, to stay fucking focused. But yeah, it's, it's said, it's written, it's thought, all the, every, every way, all different modalities of it. Okay, so then what? And then sometimes, depending on the mode, there are headphones around here, I'll put some noise casting head, headphones on to get some music. So the next one is music, to get in the flow, into the the rhythm of the day, something with some beat, not like some crazy training music, but something to get into the flow. So I'm also going to use those headphones eventually for the, the, the fifth one, which is meditation. But I'm getting some some music going, getting into the flow, something upbeat, some like electronic chill or whatever it is for you. Some people might use opera or whatever the hell you use, whatever the hell it works for you, just to get into the flow, to get, I call, I call it getting the beats for the day because all this stuff is on beats. It's like, ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. I want to get the beats for the day. I want to be thinking all, all day, like two plus two, three plus three, four plus four, two times, like know it down. You, you can answer those questions just like that. I do this, this drill with people and it's about getting your beats down for your day and your rhythms and your daily rhythms and, and the rhythm of your fucking life. And I ask them, what's two times two with three times three, four times, you go over to 10, they know them all. Then what's 13 times 13 and they fucking freeze. So that's, that's just a, a symbolic of practice and repetition and getting the daily disciplines. Like imagine if you could just have it down, boom, 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 boom. That's how the day should be. So the music gets me into that flow, into that rhythm. And it's just noise canceling headphones. And that's the, the second one, that's music. And from there, it's the muscles. It's just getting them hydrated, getting them fueled. Depending on the, the, the day, I'll either, I used to jump in, in the summertime or in the wintertime, I'll jump in the pool to get a quick shock to the system so the muscles just fucking shock them and wake them up. Sometimes I'll do the cold shower, but I've done it so much that I, it doesn't really do a ton. I still do it here and there, it still gives you that shock, but I'll do that sometimes, a cold shower. Uh, to, to get the muscles hydrated, fueled, and shocked in some way. And then movement, actual movement. This might be just, a, uh, I might jump on the Aerodyne bike for a, a sprint for just 60 seconds. Or I might just do a quick set of uh, running up and down the, the stairs for a couple times. Literally, we're talking 30, 60 seconds just to get the blood flowing. The best thing to do that gets me fucking in trouble would be to go and wake someone up. If, if, my, if the Russian, who's my wife, is not awake yet, Fucking start messing with her, wrestling around, doing, getting your blood flowing, movement for the day, or the dog, go running around with the dog, take the dog out in the yard and run for, for a couple minutes. Something fun, something energetic to get the, the body moving just into that uh, positive state of movement. And that's the fourth one. And the fifth one is, fifth M is meditation. And it, it could be, it doesn't matter what kind, meditation could be. Whatever that means to you, it could mean prayer or whatever, I don't know, but guided, unguided, I use a, an app, a guided app, because if I sit there by myself sometimes, some crazy shit goes on up inside, inside the fucking head, so I need that app that kind of walks you through it. I use it for 10 minutes every morning, 10 minutes every night is, is fucking awesome. What app? It's called Headspace. Okay, cool. Headspace, yeah, it's, it's awesome. It has all different segments and categories that you could go through and different courses to go through on it. It's pretty cool. And then I'll do some basic breathing, some just controlling my breath, deep breathing and, and breath holes and stuff like that. Just breath work, either during the meditation, before, during, or after. It's just kind of all combined with, consider that the meditation. Then from there, it's motivation. And before motive, thinking about 
needing external motivation, I'm thinking about, all right, I want to internally motivate myself. And it's just motivating myself by the things I'm already going through, the, the waking up for a day, being able to have her spend another day hanging out with my kids more than anyone I know. Like I'll get motivated by that kind of stuff, but it's motivating myself. But then also I'll do a quick reading of some, some kind of different book that has like little bullet points where it's like maybe a quote of the day or a page for the day. Like the daily stoic is a, a perfect one. The daily stoic has just 365 days and you just read that page and boom. Or if someone's into the Bible, that would be a perfect one because it's broken up into little chunks, something just to get your mind a short daily reading just for a minute or two, just to get that on that level, on that path for motivation, for personal development, but also making no mistake about it, that you need to motivate yourself and not rely on this stuff, but all together combined, it, it, I call it motivation. So that's the next one. After that is the mindfulness and mindfulness is to me, mindfulness. That's where the, 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 the journal comes in and the, in the journaling, it has my gratitude. What am I grateful for today for the day? What are my victories from the day before? What is my do not do list for the day? Uh, things like that. So it's, but it's really geared towards gratitude. And gratitude is another one that people go on and talk about it all the time on the fucking internet. And I know that they're just not really fucking grateful. They're complainers. They whine and bitch and moan. You see them in person in real life and they're fucking pricks, but they're talking about gratitude all the time. Just be grateful for what you have. And, and people really don't do that. Like I will literally will step outside of the house and just soak in the fucking air. And sometimes it's dark, or usually it's dark when I'm awake, but just getting outside and just being grateful, just looking around, looking at the pool and jacuzzi and just the, the space that we have here and just the life we have, looking at the dog sleeping and my son passed out on the couch playing video games and just soaking it in and feeling that gratitude and fucking putting it back out to the universe. There is a force to that. And people don't take it to that level. They just Say, oh, I'm grateful for my family, for my job, for a, a roof over my head and whatever. But it's so superficial. Like I'm talking about like actually going outside and in the fucking air and in the universe and injecting that gratitude out back out into the fucking universe. Like that's making, to me, that's making an impact on the fucking world. You can put that, that's an energy. There's something, there's energy all out there you can't see and vibrations out there you can't see. And so that's what I mean by gratitude. It's a fucking different level when you're talking about gratitude. And that goes right along with the victories. This is all under mindfulness with the victories for the day. What were my big things that I accomplished the day before? So I can start the day with some victories. Then what are the things I can improve for the day? So I can make today even fucking better than yesterday. Yesterday was fucking awesome. Today's going to be even awesomer. That's the way I'm thinking of it. And if the awesomer is not a word, I don't give a fuck it is now. So <laughs> that's that's the, the seventh one was mindfulness. And then from the eighth one is just the most important thing of the day. All right, what's my freak focus, most important thing of the day. If I get this one, two or three things done for the day, my main tasks, my, I call it my kill time. That's the stuff I'm going to do during my kill time. That's a, a time block on my schedule. It's in bright red. It's just kill time. Usually about three hours in the morning after my morning routine. And that's where I'm just banging out my most important shit for the day. It's the, the main tasks, whatever, whatever it is. And I'm just reviewing them in that morning routine so I can start mentally preparing for it, focusing for it visualizing it, thinking how I need to show up for the meetings I have that day, or like for, for this podcast here, that would be number eight. And then number nine is message. Number nine is message, getting my message out to the world. And so for like coaching clients, I'll send them every one of them, a text message every single morning, just a question of the day, just to kind of spark their minds and also to let them know I'm fucking out there watching and they better not fuck up with their accountability. Then also I'll do a quick Instagram story every morning. It's just part of the routine. Now the Instagram story, it's, if anyone watches it, great. That's even better. That's a, a bonus. It's really for me, holding myself accountable, getting myself in the flow. I'm sitting there talking, giving some, some tips or words of advice or whatever you want to call it, fucking mindset, message, whatever you want to call it. It's for myself. It's to kickstart my fucking day. And if, if, if one other person that could help them, fucking awesome. But it's just a quick tip or gratitude or whatever it is, a message. Then something I just added about a year ago, and, I, and I've been doing this routine for, I don't even know, quite close to 10 years, but something I added just a year ago is pretty fucked up, is, so I, I would send messages out to clients, right, to paying clients. I'll even do a message to myself on Instagram and to fucking strangers and followers who don't even fucking know, who don't give two shits about you, and I wouldn't send anything to fucking, to, to the Russian. So now I actually, on my checklist in the morning, it actually says, text the Russian. So after I text all the clients, 
I send the Russian a text message every fucking morning because how fucked up is that? We do it. It's the same thing I told you. And I'm a hypocrite if I'm not doing it myself. And I'll tell you the truth. Sometimes all this stuff that I'm saying, I'll, I have a checklist every day that I actually go through and make sure I did it all because a lot of times you get into the flow, I do it. And I'm like, I sit down getting ready to start the work day, the kill time. And I look at the checklist. I'm like, oh, fuck, I didn't text message the Russian. So I got to sit and go and text her real quick. But just a morning message, just a check in, whatever, gratitude, appreciation, something funny, something dirty, whatever it is, just a message for the day to kickstart the day because I'm doing that for myself, doing it for everyone else. Why wouldn't I do it for my, my family and, and wife? And that's the pretty much the, the breakdown overall of the morning routine. And that, wow. I give myself a lot of time for it because I wake up early enough to do it. I like to spend the time in this stuff because I know this sets up, sets up success for the day. Like after that morning routine, I'll give myself an hour sometimes. On Fridays, I'll give myself even more. I call it Freedom Fridays. I just go and take my time on this stuff. And I can't have a fucking bad day after that. That's why I take so much time in it. I can't have a bad day. It's a fucking awesome day every day as long as I get all that stuff in. So I have nothing to worry about. So I spend time in it. I can rush through it and get right to work and, and start going to try and make some money. I could do that, but this is the way I choose to do it. And, and people could pick and choose what pieces, pieces work for them in their character, in their life and, and their schedule and agenda and all that. But it works for me. What time do you wake up every day? 4 a.m. is the normal time. If I sleep in, it's five. You know, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I feel like my morning routine and morning routine in general is the key, the absolute key to success because we get one, one day, right? We, we only get one day to live. You cannot live tomorrow and you certainly can't relive yesterday. So if you get one day to live, doing the shit in the beginning of the day that is all win the whole entire time, time that you can control, time that you can control the outcome of, which is very, very different than life, right? Like most of the time we are awake and walking through the world. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not absolute control of ours, right? There's family, there's business, there's friends, there's dogs, there's, there's like, there's fucking politics, there's war. I mean, there's everything that's going on in the world that we don't have complete control over outside of if you rise before the sun, which is something that I talk so much about rising before the sun every single day. And sometimes that's 4 15 in the morning. And then in the winter time, it could be six o'clock in the morning. So like if your plan is to rise before the sun, then you get a little bit of free time, you know, a little bit of longer time in the winter time. I personally strongly adhere to waking up before five o'clock in the morning, because that is earlier than most people. And it gives me at least two hours to absolutely crush because I'm pouring the foundation, I'm pouring the cement to build my day upon. And if I choose not to pour the cement on those days, I am going to be building my day on dirt and that shit is never sturdy. You know what I mean? And I bet any day that if you, for some reason had to rush your morning routine or Probably not. You probably wouldn't skip it because you just wouldn't let it happen. But if it just wasn't dialed in the way it should be because of whatever reason, maybe you schedule something too soon and it cut it short, probably it fucked up the whole rest of your day. Like the whole rest of your day is just off. Something feels off. You feel like you're always playing catch up and you can't put your finger on what it is. And it probably goes right back to that. Exactly. What you you're said. right. You're right. Especially when you live this kind of lifestyle, um, which I, I, I argue is, is the best way to live. <laughs> um, what does your evening routine look like? Yeah, so it's very, very similar, similar to that. But it's, and you're talking about like end of the night, all the way end, end of, the of the night, night right wind down sleep. routine, but right before, like before bed. Yeah. So and and the start of the the and I call it the EON, the end of night, end of night routine. The start of that is like literally, it's almost sometimes makes it hard to go to sleep because I can't. We're talking about the morning routine. I fucking love that time. If I could just live in my morning routine all day, I'll fucking just stay there. It's <laughs> I go to sleep at night, can't wait to wake up to go into that space. Cause you're like in, like you said, it's in control. It's a fucking different realm of like consciousness almost fucking awesome. So that's what kickstarts the, the nighttime routine is making sure that I'm optimizing and setting it up for that next day. And, it, and the nighttime routine really has steps that start up to it, leading up to it because there's gotta be a, a, cur I got, I set curfews and different days, depending on if it's the weekend or what I have coming up the next day, I, I determine what the curfew is, what time the curfew is. But there should be a curfew on caffeine, meaning what time is the last time I have caffeine? Curfew on food, on eating, because digestion, 
it's going to screw up your fucking sleep. You're not going to get good enough sleep. Even curfew on water. I used to chug shitloads of water before I went, like right before I went to sleep. And then it would fuck up my sleep because you wake up. You, you, I, I swore some days that I was going to piss the bed like a fucking kid because I drink so much water. And then you, you have to get up in the middle of the night. You have to run to the fucking bathroom and go take a piss because I would chug so much. So I have a curfew on water. When am I going to stop drinking large amounts of water so it doesn't fuck up my sleep? I want to optimize. I want to weaponize my sleep. It's not sleep. I'm fucking working in my sleep. I'm working. I'm repairing. I'm preparing. I'm thinking. I'm coming up with ideas. I want to fucking weaponize that shit. So there's a, a curfew on water. Then also a curfew on work. When is work going to stop? And I'll talk about that entire routine later when we talk about a, a, an additional habit to add into there. Also a curfew on screens, a curfew on lights. Like when is the lights going to go out? When are you going to start shutting down for the night? So that's the first thing is that all sets up getting to the morning or the end EON, the end of night routine. And then from there, it's it starts off with the writing. And that's nighttime. I do night, some nighttime journaling. And it's very similar to the to the day. I'm, I'm going through my monsters, writing, actually writing them down. I have a scorecard for the day. So I score myself in at least, depending on the day of the week, on the weekends, on Sunday, it's 20 categories, one through five. Every other day, it's just five. It's discipline, energy, confidence, action, and freak, meaning was I my freak self. So me and my son, we both do those together. We do writing every night together. We give ourselves a score and then we just talk about our scores. It's just fucking awesome. Like that right there, like it, it just caps off the day. We sit there and he'll hear me get out of 25 or 21 sometimes or 22 and he's like in shock, but it opens up a great conversation for us because he expects me to be 25 every day. And I'll give my energy a four that day. He's like, what? Your energy a four, why? And I'll explain to him where I felt like it was dipping, where I thought I could have been better. I showed up better, I've done more. It makes all awesome conversations for us. So a scorecard goes along with the writing every day. You need to know where, what the fucking score of the game is and where you're doing, where you're fucking up and be brutally honest with yourself and have reflection. If you're not, then, then you're fucking up. Then from there is just the personal stuff, like getting the, taking my vitamins with the least amount of water that I can really, the, whatever vitamin I take before I go to sleep and the shower and I brush teeth, whatever else. Then we do a security check. Me and my son, we do a security check every night. It's another thing. It's just fucking awesome. We literally go in. Sometimes we're doing it fully armed with flashlights. We shut out all the lights and we, we go with lights out and just flashlights and, and weapons. Sometimes it's just a quick version with making sure all the windows, doors are locked, alarms are set. We go into the garage, make sure everything's inside the garage, the garage doors closed, the door to the garage is locked. The alarms are set, all windows and doors are locked. And we have a, a, a routine and a, a pattern where we pretty much clear the house and, and security check for the house. Every one of these little things is, is symbolic that, all right, the night is shutting down. It's Knowing that, all right, that the, the fucking fortress is secure, I can then rest my head. It's going to give me that 1% extra edge in weaponizing my sleep. That's the way I see it. I want every fucking advantage I can get. So knowing that we're safe, secure, the cameras are all working, the alarm system's working, the fucking dog is, is all set, security check. The next thing is actually saying out loud to everyone in the house, good night. I love you. Every single person, like actually saying, saying goodnight. It's all symbolic of the night is ending. We're ending this one. We're going to show up tomorrow fucking better than we were today. And then it's also from there is controlling, then controlling the environment. Bertie kind of set up the, the curfews, but it's making sure that wherever I'm going to be sleeping is as dark as possible, as cold as possible, and as quiet as possible. And that's going to give the, the best sleep. Every one of these is just 1% weaponizing the fucking sleep. Then I'm actually just checking my alarm on the, on the phone. And if it's a time that I have to wake up at like two in the morning, so I have to catch a flight or something, I'll have a separate old school alarm clock across the room with like the battery ones, the ones that have like those actual bells, like those 19 fucking 88 ones. And when those things go off, it's like a real air rig. Like you jump out and fucking think that there's an attack. So that shit gets you up. So, but I'll check the alarm on the clock. Just to make sure it's set, because the worst thing, and it's a couple of times in my life, like years ago, where you just, your alarm didn't go off because it wasn't fucking set or something was off on it. The worst, nothing worse in the world than that. So actually just checking the alarm. Another 1% click to get better sleep, knowing, all right, I'm clear. It's set for 4 a.m. I'm ready to get up. No problem. If I have a flight, it's set for 2.45, whatever it is. All right, we're all set. Next is, lay, I'm in bed, laying down. And then again, it's some of that reading, that Usually for me, it's it's stoic philosophy, just a minute, a couple minutes of reading. It's that same motivational type reading that I was talking about in the morning. Not reading my whatever book I'm reading. Like there's always be a, a book that I have that I have set reading time, 30 minute reading time block every day 
for reading. We're not talking about that book because that's one that I'm trying to get smarter on and learn. This is just stuff to soak into my head for the, the brain and, and fucking spirit to marinate on overnight subconsciously in the sleep. Something philosophical, motivational, personal development type stuff. And just a couple bullet points just to soak it in. Fucking lights go out. A hard, hard stop time of 930 is the latest the lights are going out. And that's the rules and boundaries set in the house. And that's a whole nother topic is setting boundaries and rules and setting the standard and living the standard and enforcing the standard. So lights go out 930, close the eyes. And then again, meditation, visualization, prayer, whatever you want to call it. And that's again through the, sometimes through the app and sometimes it's just meditating, breathing and visualization, just fading off. And it's just soaking all that fall together, soaking up to fucking use sleep as a weapon to wake up ready to go to fucking war and be an even better role model to my fucking kids and family the, the next day and having the energy and the, and the fire to, to show up the next morning. Whew. That is a fucking evening routine, my man. Um, I love that, especially the security check. <laughs> I, I got to start doing that. I got to start doing that. I'm, I'm, I'm slacking there for sure. Um, let's talk about three habits or, or it doesn't have to be three, but a few habits that you do regularly that you would simply never want to live without. They are, they define your being. Awesome. Awesome. And, and I could go into some that you probably hear all the time, some basic ones. So I wanted to go a little different. And these are ones that I do every day. And these are actually part of my morning routine. I actually write on these things and journal on these things and think about what can I do today? And, and it's all part of the freedom. And actually, while you were talking, I'm sitting here writing fucking notes on a podcast of what you said. And it fits in exactly what we're talking about. It's how fear fuels freedom. It was just something that just popped in my head when you were talking before and I wrote it down. But that's one of them. I call it freak fear. Every morning, part of my journaling, one of the journal exercises every morning is, is I write down freak fear. And that's meaning what am I going to do today? Something that's fucking hard, something that's scary, something that could be fearful, something that's going to be fucking bold, something to make me stand out. What can I do today that's fucking hard and scary and bold? Like that's one of the things that, and it keeps you sharp. It keeps you on edge. It keeps you always in the fight. It always keeps you charging forward. It keeps that freak fire all the time. It keeps your energy levels up. It keeps your enthusiasm up because it's something fucking scary out there on every day on a, a daily basis. And that's just a small micro level on a daily basis. But then also I'll have one for the week, maybe something on the weekend. Like every Saturday we do our, our work family workouts called Suffering Saturday. Knowing that that's coming up every fucking Saturday makes the workouts. It makes every morning when I wake up a little fucking scary because I know every day is one day closer to that. And that day is going to fucking suck. So it's the same freak fear. So that's on a, a, a little bigger of a scale, like on a weekly scale. Then on a monthly scale, usually we haven't done it. We had, my, we had some injuries and some traveling and stuff, but we have a, usually a monthly challenge. We do a 24 hour monthly challenge that we do as a family. So knowing that that's lingering out there. And then even on a bigger scale, like every quarter, or every couple of times a year, something massive, like some of the hardest hikes that are out there in California that people train for years for, and they show up with their poles and all their spiked boots and all that shit. And we just set, put that on the calendar and we just go and do it with our fucking tennis shoes on just for, to make it even fucking harder with like 40, 50 pound packs on carrying all of our own shit. So always putting something fearful out there is a habit. And it's just like the project. And you signed up for the project, knowing that that date was there. And every day you were getting closer to it. That shit keeps you on fucking edge. That, that you, you can get more just by putting something out there. Someone might, maybe it's a marathon for someone, or maybe someone else, someone joins the project. Putting that out there, you can sometimes get more out of the, the buildup to that event than the event itself. The event itself is just like the byproduct. That's a bonus. That's like, all right, that's already a... a a done deal, but the, the commitment and the fear and the focus and discipline that it's going to build leading up to that fearful thing. It's a powerful fucking thing. And it's a, it's an, uh, something that I, I try to make a daily discipline. I don't even, I try to call them habits. I try to call them daily disciplines because I wanted to think of it on a whole different fucking level, but freak fear is, is probably the first one that, that would come to mind. And then on top of that, I don't want to say you need to counterbalance it because I hate the word fucking balance, but synergistically right after i do that i call it freak fun what is something i'm going to do today that's going to be fucking fun something exciting what's a memorable experience i'm going to create for my kids today like every fucking day what's something a memorable experience i can create 
So I counterbalance those two and, and syner have synergy between those two of free fear and free fun every fucking morning. And, and that both of those, the fear and the fun, those fuel the freedom, like you were saying earlier. So I'd say those are probably two that come to the top of my mind that are different than just the regular things like setting a morning routine and I time block like a motherfucker, like things like that. But that's the boring stuff. But this is the a little deeper stuff that it lights a fucking fire under your ass and makes you show up with your A game. I have a saying, if you're always on your A game, you never have to get on your A game. And if you are always have something fearful to look forward to and always have something exciting and fun to look forward to, you're always be on your fucking A game. You'll always be bringing the fucking fire. You'll always be disciplined and committed and you'll always be having a good day. It'll be impossible to have a bad day. So once I've implemented those, you know, and of course this is in addition to the morning routine, that evening routine we talked about, time blocking and scheduling and, and having boundaries and controlling my day and all that stuff, all this with the freak fear and the freak fun, this leads to that freedom you're talking about. And freedom to me is just living life on your own terms, having no bad days, only fucking awesome days, no cheat days, no days off. I don't take a day off and train ever. I fucking train every day. Every single fucking day I train. Every single day I eat healthy. Like there's no cheat days. There's no days off. There's no fucking half-assing. Like anything that, and I think I put in an email today, anything that's worth fucking doing or feels good doing or you know is good for you or you know is working, why the fuck would you take a day off from it? Why would you intentionally say, I'm not going to do that thing today? Like, I'm, all right, let me take a day off from my morning routine because what, you need a break? It's fucking working. Why would you not do it? Why would you not do it every day? Like with perfection, 100% of the time, no days off. Same thing with fucking exercise. Same thing with eating healthy. Same things with meditation. Like, if it's fucking working, there should be no days off, which makes you never have any fucking bad days. Only awesome days. So long answer. I want to. I want to. I want to just ask you a question about that because I because that obviously is an intense approach. So what, like, on say you're on vacation with the fam, and you guys want to go to you know you're in Italy and you want to eat like the best pizza that that's ever been made in the world like do you just not do that or do you say fuck it i'm doing that intentionally if, if i'll never eat something because oh my god it's there to have this urge the fucking cake and the ice cream the pizza looks so good i'll know ahead of time what i'm gonna do i'll make a conscious decision if i'm gonna do that and that's gonna be very fucking rare but i was saying People, people say, oh, you're lucky. You can eat whatever you want. Motherfucker, I can't eat whatever I want. I can eat whatever I want because I don't eat whatever I want. So when I want to eat whatever I want, I can because I don't do it 99.9% .9 of the time. So if I want to do it, I'm going to fucking earn. I, I know I earned it and I know I'm locked in all the time. I also know what it's going to fucking do to me. I know what it's going to, how it's going to set me back. I know the mental and psychological and emotional fuckery it's going to do in your head just from that one thing, knowing that you broke discipline. And that's going to make me probably not want to do it and not do it. But if I, if I wanted to do it, that's part of the fucking freedom. Fuck yeah. I would, I would, you won't see it happen very often or hardly ever. But if I, if I wanted a fucking piece of pizza, I would eat it, but it's, I can't have it because I don't have it. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Fucking no, it makes, I mean, that's, that's my, that's my MO. I'm a little less rigid. I mean, I, I, you know, if I, I would say 85% of the time I am, completely dialed in every single meal is accounted for tracked and 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 has intention and then you know my wife my, my wife is a danish countryside baker you know what i mean and so it's 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 hard for me at times to to uh completely you know let them just go go ham and and, and sit on the sidelines actually my wife gives me a ton of shit of it for, from it uh for it because i tend to to take a step back when they when they're they're having at it but right, um, go gain like 50 pounds and get some man tits and see if she still wants to uh, talk to you she loves, she'll like you a lot better the way you are with being rigid with your nutrition no woman women women try to they say oh i liked my man like that motherfucker no you don't you're just saying that so he doesn't go and fucking commit suicide or something you don't like him that no man is meant to be all soft and jiggly and weak so anyway I, I hear you loud and clear. I agree. <laughs> My wife would certainly not like that. Um, what What's a habit that you've broken, uh, how you broke it, and how that changed your life? Broken meaning a a like maybe a bad habit? A bad habit. A bad habit that you that you decided was had to go. Got it. Got it. So I have this, this, this saying, I write it down, not every day, but it pops in my head every day to keep myself in check. And it is from breaking a bad habit. It's F-Y-P-J. Sometimes I just write F-Y-P-J and I'll explain what it is 
here in a second, but it's, it's looking at other people's success or money or fame or file. We, you look at that and you get caught up in that sometimes, right? You start thinking, oh, why don't I have that? I should have that. I deserve that. I need to have that. I want to have that. And you don't, and none of those things are fucking true you, or unless they are true, but it's knowing what my lifestyle and I want to fucking live is and living according to that. So the old, the bad habit was looking at these people and, and the FYPJ stands for fuck your private jet. Meaning I don't need to live someone else's life. Like I don't give a fuck if someone has a, has a private jet. I really myself personally have no desire or need or want for a private fucking jet. Because to me, if I have that private jet, probably it means I'm gonna have to get to that level. Now, can I get a private jet if I want to? Fuck yeah, absolutely 100% certain I could if I wanted to. But for me to get to that level to do it, I'm pretty certain I would have to not live the lifestyle I want to live. I wouldn't be able to drive my kids to school every Tuesday and Thursday. I wouldn't be home five days a week when they come home from school. I'm here when they come home from school every fucking day, unless I'm in the project, maybe once a month when I'm like in the project or the project's like every two months, something like that, or once in a while if I'm traveling. And a lot of times I take them with travel. I went to this self-defense seminar this weekend in Vegas, took the kids with me and one of them even attended and did the entire thing with me. So that private jet lifestyle and seeing all the flash and the money and people with billion dollar companies, I don't even need a billion dollar company to live the lifestyle I want. And someone you could might say, oh my God, I, I can't believe that you're, you're thinking so small or not thinking big enough. I'm thinking much bigger. I'm still thinking bigger, but according to the lifestyle I want to live. So who's more successful? The motherfucker who wants a private jet and maybe is getting there and getting close but living this miserable life, never sees their family, never spends time with their kids, their kids are fucking crack whores or whatever else, and, and they don't have any relationship with them, but they're so close to that private jet, maybe even they get the private jet. Who's more successful? That person or the person that's living congruent and actually with the fucking lifestyle that they want and they chose it that they've been working for. So to me, that's the habit that I broke is I used to start getting hungry for that stuff. You start losing focus on the important shit. So... Once I came up with that, I came up with this long journal with writing. It was just a blank journal. I wrote for like, I don't know, like seven, eight pages. And it was all about fuck your private jet. To me, that person is richer and wealthier and more successful that doesn't have the private jet. Maybe only makes a couple million dollars a year or not even maybe a few hundred thousand dollars a year is more successful than that person making a hundred million dollars a year that has a private jet or wants a private jet, especially if they are making a hundred million dollars a year and don't have their private jet yet. And they're still working for it. That person is far less successful to me than this person that looks like, oh, they're nowhere near as successful. This motherfucker is 10 times more successful. So who, to me, I feel myself more powerful and more successful and richer and wealthier and fucking happier than that and, and more freedom than that person in there. So it's that, I call it fuck your private jet. That's just symbolic for that whole thing of not reaching for those shiny objects, those things that other people have and really giving a fuck what they have because Guess what? If someone's a dickhead and they go and make tons of millions and millions of dollars and they're not a good father and they make millions of dollars, they have a private jet or they move into a big mansion or they move into another country and they go on vacation to some exotic fucking island. Guess what? That same dickhead is still there with them. That dickhead followed them everywhere they went. So they're still not fucking happy or powerful or successful. So fuck your private jet. So that was when I detached from that and cut the cord of the private jet thinking I need a fucking private jet with my name on and all this other shit. Like I'd say that's probably the biggest. And I, I could think of other ones too, but that's probably one of the biggest ones that, that made a, a big impact on me is cutting that habit of that hunt, that hunt for that shit that I didn't want and didn't fucking need. Dude, this is uh, this has been such an incredible, I mean, I feel like you are the quintessential creature of habit. I really do believe that. I mean, you know, I knew that I was going to get into some discipline with you here. Um, I just didn't know how severe it is. And, and you really do you, you demand your life. And that is, that, that, that is incredibly powerful. You, uh, and I believe every word you say, um, just cause I know you on a different level. Um, with that, I always finish the podcast with a final question, which is probably the, where, where the majority of the value comes in here. You live this insanely regimented life although you're probably that one of the happiest and, and more free people I would imagine I know um, based on the life that you've chosen to live. Um, 
you work your ass off, you train every day, you eat fucking insanely healthy, you help an enormous amount of men specifically change their lives and turn their lives around. What is it all for? Why do you do this day in and day out? It's kind of what we start with, but it's to break the fucking cycle, to break the cycle. And on a, a smaller scale, to break the cycle of shitty childhood that I had, I, you, you, could be, uh, you're, you could be a crackhead because your parents were crackheads, or you can not be a crackhead because your parents were crackheads. So it's to break the cycle, break the cycle of bullshit, of half-assery, of fucking laziness, of fucking weak ass men just dragging through life and and not taking care of their fucking kids and and not creating these powerful connections and and emotional and experiences with their kids so it would be to break break the cycle and not just all right so if i just break the cycle here right i should say breaking the cycle with just one person that's great but it starts with yourself right so with let's say excellence or personal development or even leadership to use an example stage one of that is just all right i'm gonna lead myself you can't do anything until you can lead yourself or or develop yourself development of yourself but the next step is developing other people or developing future leaders then the third step is developing future leaders who also develop future leaders. Like that's what it's all about. That next step, that that next step thing. So not just leading yourself, not just leading others because they're the followers, leading others who become leaders themselves and then leading others who become leaders who also create future leaders or also help people develop themselves. That's what a force multiplier comes in there. That's what to me would break in the cycle is. You're talking about the difference between helping hundreds of people to millions of people. If you can develop people who also develop other people like that's what i want to think of my 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 kids my son and my kids but from we're talking from a man's perspective like to to, the, to my son let's say i don't want to just lead myself so i can lead myself so he, it could be his example great that's great that's a fucking price's mission that's just the price to have a kid the next thing is to lead him to actually lead him be a leader to him the next stage is to turn him into a leader so but that's still not good enough. To make him a leader, he just has followers. But now if I could turn him into a leader or develop him so that he is developing future leaders and future awesome fucking people, and then each one of those, if it was done right, does the same thing. It's a never-ending fucking loop. Now you're talking about breaking a cycle on a massive motherfucking scale. Like, that's a force multiplier. That's, you're talking millions of fucking people. People talk about like they want to impact millions of people. They want to impact the world. That's how you fucking do it. Not just by doing a bunch of fucking habits yourself. Not just worrying about yourself. It comes down to fuck me. Fuck me. It's not about me. It's about him and my kids and the fucking people that they're going to help develop other people. Like that's where it fucking explodes and you change. You talk about changing the fucking world. Steve, this is fucking awesome. I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time, man. I, I know that we are going to get an enormous amount of awesome feedback from this podcast. And, you know, I, I, I can't thank you enough for, for helping lead and guide me through that experience and, uh, and doing exactly what you just said uh, is your sort of reasoning for, for why you do what you do uh, with me. Uh, you know, it's uh I, I, I'm, I always want to stay teachable. I always want to stay humble um, in, 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 in this idea that like once we, once we feel like we've stopped learning is actually when we stop fucking growing. And I never want to stop growing, dude, ever, 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 ever want to stop growing. So, you know, I'm sure people have learned a lot from this today. And I know I certainly have learned a lot from you and have definitely passed some of the lessons that you've taught me on to my kids and, uh, and, and other people in, in my, in my, uh, in my networking community. Dude, thank you so much, man. Um, I, I look forward to, uh, to continuing our, our friendship uh, over the years. And you just and call me a friend. I have a fucking friend. I think it's my first friend. Fuck that. <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate you, brother. I really do. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Fucking anytime. Let me know if you need anything, help with anything else. Fucking here. Thank you, Steve. Peace. Awesome.